back in the gym. Talk to us a little bit about that and how challenging that was for you. Still challenging. These young guys just pushing. You know, these guys are active. These young guys are active. They're pushing. And uh, these guys give me good work. And a lot of times, you know, when a young guy, when these young guys give you good work, they're like, oh, man, I think I can beat Floyd Mayweather. I tell these young guys, remember, you guys are world champions in the boxing gym. You know, I'm, I'm the world champion under the lights. And it's all about winning belts under the lights and making money when it counts. When was the first time you actually heard about Connor and had a chance to sit down and watch a fight of his and see what kind of skills he has? I, seen, I mainly only seen highlights. I've really never seen a whole fight of Conor McGregor. I've seen, you know, when I was at Isaiah Thomas, the NBA player, you know, who's a close friend of mine, I went to his wedding, and then someone said, you know, Conor McGregor was, was fighting. I think it was the Diaz fight. One or two. Number two. Okay. And um, every now and then I go look at, you know, look at the security phone to see what was going on. Um, I didn't really want to watch. I was up with my. I was upset. I don't know if it was my security or someone else's security who was watching on their phone, probably still in the fight. And you know, I don't like you, but I like to steal pay per view. <laughs> you go out there and buy it. Who do you think's better at promotion, you or Fifty Cent? Uh, who teaches who more? Uh, I, I don't really understand the question. Fifty Cent's good at promoting by by his hype that he creates, and so are you. But do you guys ever learn from each other? And who do you think is better at that? Um, I'm a boxer promoter. You know, that's what I do. I stay in my lane. I'm a boxer promoter. And, you know, um, he's a guy that's in music, that's done it real, real big in music. And and I'm pretty sure he wishes me the best, and I wish him, I wish 50 nothing but the best. Floyd, you, you change your technique. You call Connor, you call Connor you an interesting your guy. You call Connor an interesting like guy. Me. Do you feel kind of like maybe he's taking a page out of your book in terms of the way he promotes himself, the Absolutely. bold brashness? Absolutely. And I think that is very interesting. You know, uh, I'm glad someone else can carry the torch. I did it for years. I mean, years, probably 15 to 16 years straight. You know, the last five years, you know, a bit more laid back because, you know, a lot calm, a lot older. You know, um, look at things in a different way now. Did you change your technique for this fight? And, um, we don't know. We just training, working every day. Is there a part of you that feels that you have to get them out of there right away and a guy like him, who's never had a professional boxing fight in his life, can't go 12 rounds with someone of your caliber and your pedigree. He's young. He's young. He can go 15 rounds. He's young. You know, I'm the old man. He's the young man. Um, we both bring a lot to the table. We both bring a lot to the table. You know, I'm bringing 49 and 0. The whole boxing world. He's bringing the MMA world. And he has a huge following. And, you know, just being uh, you know, a legend, a, a living legend in the sport, an icon in the sport. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to go down in the Hall of Fame, in the MMA Hall of Fame someday. So it's a very, very good matchup. Who hijacked your swag the most? Come on over here. Can please. Canelo or yeah. Conor McGregor? <laughs> Or Adrian Broner. Or Adrian Broner. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I like, I like all of those guys. I'm not going to do that. Hey, hey, Floyd, you have an interesting style. How's your style going to affect this fight? Um, uh, do what I do. Go out there and fight. And, and, you know, be at my best. I don't know what the game plan is. I have to talk with my father. You know, speak with my team and see, you know, what's the game plan. Bro, how are you feeling? Wildest dreams. Fighting an MMA guy. He's just a fighter. You know, I don't look at him as an MMA, MMA guy. I look at Conor McGregor as a warrior. I look at Conor McGregor as a fighter. He's a tough competitor, and he's a warrior. So he won't come in to fight. He'll, I mean, box, he'll come in to swing and fight. He's coming to win. You know, he's coming to win. And um, I said this before to some of the other reporters. I'm not the same Floyd Mayweather I was two years ago. You know, I think... You know, I lost, I lost a little bit. I, I lost a lot of bit, you know, from 21 years ago. But I still think I can go out there and compete and be at my best. Can we go back to a few uh, fights when you were fighting the Hatton and the Dale Hoy and those guys? Well, you're yeah. the king of trash talk. I and was young. <laughs> I was young. I know, we were really like that, don't we? I mean, that was... Is he now the king? I mean, that was... I think I fought Dale Hoy. <laughs> so 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. 10 years, a decade ago. But you were the king of trash talking, firing people up. I used to be the king of trash talking. Is now McGregor? 
he good. He good. He's one of the best out there. He's good. And very interesting. Very interesting character. I like him actually. Do you think he break Pacquiao's record 4.6? We'll just see. You know, ho hopefully so. You know, records are made to be broken. That's what we're here. That's what we both are here to do. I just saw 48. What does 48 represent? Uh, no, that's Pacquiao. That's, the, that's the, my Pacquiao. Fight. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you know, uh, we done. You know, uh, that's the ultimate goal is to break that record. But we can never forget number 48. <laughs> Ford, how much? That was the biggest fight in history. How biggest much does this add to your legacy? This fight. Um, you know, I can't say. You know, uh, as for the fans and the people, that's in that department to place me. Well, this one right here, right like the, the total gain numbers by perhaps you know, twenty million. Is it unbelievable to you? <laughs> um, I mean, when you think about that, what is it around like seventy-three now? They're expecting this thing to be close to hundred for just the gain. Uh, I don't. I don't think me and Pacquiao done like seventy some million at the gate. I think we should be close to close to a hundred million, close to it. Um, I'm just blessed. And what does that tell you about this fight when they when it they do tell something you, like that? It is, it, I, I mean, I think it took two big names, two guys that put a lot, a lot of work into combat sports. You know, uh, McGregor put a lot into MMA. I put a lot into boxing. He's a warrior. I'm a warrior. So we put a lot into comp into into both of our sports. But we're both fighters. No matter what. If he's in the MMA or if I'm in boxing, we're both fighters. He's a stand-up fighter. I'm a stand-up fighter. You will have the top four gates of all time. What would you want to whisper in Bob Ar Bob Arum's ear? Uh, I, you know, I can't really say that. <laughs> I'm, lost, I'm lost for words. I can't really say anything. Uh -huh. It's just that um, I think the, the three biggest pay-per-view fights in history I was a part of. Mm -hmm. And uh, I keep my fingers crossed, hopefully the fourth fight. How does this fight end? I can't say. You know, I can't really say. The only thing I can do is take one day at a time. And when we get there and go out there and pro approach it like I normally approach it. Have you prepared for this one as well as you prepare for any of the others, knowing who the opponent is or differently at all? Or? Well, I'm older, I can't work like I used to work. 